Wow, wow, wow. The music that just permeated the atmosphere is a personification of the song, Big Girls Cry. Now, when I wrote that song over 11 years ago, the lyrics were a testament to my having survived an immeasurable amount of pain. That while travailing through those unfamiliar and often terrifying moments, I didn't realize I'd survive. Here's a trailer into some of the things I managed to survive prior to writing those lyrics. Sexual abuse, betrayal, morbid obesity, domestic violence, and so much more, but despite all of those difficult experiences that seemed to kill every aspect of my being while I was going through them, I survived. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With all due respect, I would not have survived if I did not at least start to evolve into the literal embodiment of the lyrics that I'd written in moments of profound healing. And because of that, I like to share with you guys my methodology that serves how I was able to navigate those unfamiliar and unknown at the time experiences. I came to realize that I was able to navigate all of that pain as a result of three aspects of love. So my first aspect of love is meditation. In that aspect of love, I allowed myself to feel and heal by allowing myself to feel the pain that I'd often smothered with toxic eating habits and relationships and so much more. In that space, I started to realize and accept that it's okay to admit that I've been in pain for a very long time. I allowed myself to just cry. Big girls cry, huh? Big boys cry. I started to see myself outside of myself in that meditative space. And then I begin to love on myself, care for myself, forgive myself, be kind to myself. And I stopped shaming myself. And although our meditative processes and experiences may be different, if the results are positive and fruitful, you're well on your way to experiencing this next aspect of love. Purpose, that's what I call it. And I realized this aspect of love in the meditative space. It's actually where I began to navigate by honoring my present moment. I started to realize that I was grateful for my present moment because for some reason, I began to identify that all of the difficult experiences that I was going through seemed to work towards a greater good. Because the present moment that I'm in right now, the present moment that I was honoring then, was the result of the pain. Let me give you an example. Having experienced sexual abuse as a seven-year-old little girl for at least a year of her life, when I was an educator, I was better able to identify when a child exhibited characteristics of being sexually abused. I mean, I was so keen with being able to identify that, that even those who are trained may miss certain cues because it was not their experience. Purpose, a greater good. Betrayal. Betrayal literally taught me patience. Having been betrayed by an institution that was designed to protect me, it taught me patience because I desired positive relationships. It made me willing to wait before I forged any type of relationship 
so that I can be sure that the relationship was healthy. Morbid obesity. Having been at least 100 pounds heavier than I am right now, it taught me about healthier eating habits. Let me tell you why I know this is the case. Because the primary reason for me losing the weight was so that I can have a smaller frame. I'm just going to keep it real with you. It wasn't so I could just feel good and be healthy. It was because I wanted to have a smaller frame. So if I would have already been small, I would not have worked towards learning the healthier methods that taught me how to lose the weight that I've already lost. That's a greater good, and I'm able to help so many others. And domestic violence, oh, that taught me that I'm a survivor. That taught me how to stand up for myself, how to advocate. When I went through the abuse, I literally was almost killed. And I began to speak to people that I trusted. In short, it led me and my child to a shelter that protected us. I went to support groups. I did all of the things that they said would help me. About a year into this program, they invited me to train as a crisis line counselor. As a certified crisis line counselor, I was able to save countless women's lives, men's lives, from the hand of domestic violence. But I was almost killed, yet I helped to save countless people's lives. If that's not a greater good, I don't know what is. So those are the three aspects of love in motion. I call this one a commonality and different. And what's so beautiful about this is it really symbolizes the theme navigating the unknown. Different unknowns, a common navigation. Who can guess what that common navigation is? Love. The three aspects of love. In a commonality and different, and in navigating it with love, we realize Loving ourselves first is a thing that's going to help us to serve and love other people. By valuing ourselves, we then begin to learn how to value others. And in valuing others, you serve in such a way that you recognize the meditation, the purpose, and the commonality and different work hand in hand. Now I'm going to give to you all a timeline of events that proves no matter what season you're in. The season that I was telling you about was over 11 years ago when I wrote the lyrics. This timeline of events is more current. And I ended up applying this same methodology and it was the only thing that got me through. Love, the commonality, indifferent. The three aspects of love became more than just a revelation. But I realized it is my reality for the rest of my life. How many dreamers do we have in here? You dream? In summer of 2017, I had a dream. In this dream, I was standing in the middle of an open field. And I could hear someone calling, Daniel, 19. Daniel. 19. And it continued to say, Daniel, 19, for at least three or four times. And then I was like, OK, uh, it's only me. I don't see a Daniel, but um, OK. So I remember as I continued to look, I saw the sun rising. Oh, it was so beautiful. I woke up, and being a dreamer, I kind of did a little research, didn't really find anything that spoke to me, so I just left it in my um, journal. Fast forward to um, September 2018. While in my meditative space, I realized that Daniel that was being summoned in the dream was actually me. I was being called Daniel. Didn't really fully understand it, but I just added it to that part of my journal. Fast forward to January 8th of 2019. I was on the phone with my big brother, 
Oh, we used to have best conversations. We were talking about love and how love has been so wonderful in our lives. He was getting ready to get married in the Dominican, and we were just happy, happy, happy. We get off the phone at around 1 o'clock in the morning, which then transitions to January 9th. Around 11 o'clock a.m. later that morning, my little sister gives me a call. I'm like, hey, sis, what's up? You know, getting ready to uh, make an appointment for my taxes. And she says, what you doing? She said, I need for you to sit down. I was like, okay, I'm sitting down. I'm making an appointment. My sister shared with me that my brother that I was on the phone with had suddenly passed away, unexpectedly, healthy, fit, as far as we knew. He was actually one of the people that helped me in my weight loss journey, suddenly. Let's fast forward to Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2019. So I returned to a job working with some of my wonderful high school students after taking some time off grieving with, about my brother. And as soon as I walk into the school, my students rush me and give me hugs, and I'm just so happy and loving on them. Then I started to see tears, and I'm like, whoa, I know you guys miss me, but no, not, this is a lot. And I remember one of my students looking at me, and she says, she doesn't know. She doesn't know. And she never told me, and I'm like, no what? They share with me that one of my students, an 11th grade star basketball player you would never suspect it, jumped to his death in suicide while I was out. Can you imagine? I could not continue that day, 2019. I remember um, when I lost my brother, the only good that I can find in that, at least we have, you know, our mom, our dad to kind of hold things together, like that would be even worse if we didn't have them. And just, well, fast forward to March 18th, 2019. I was back serving my high school students, just love them, love them, love them. And I noticed that I had seen missed calls. That's a bit much. And when I came out, I realized missed calls was from my aunt. And she sent one text, and the text said, call your aunt. And the thing about my aunt, I don't know if you guys have any of those aunts, like they're old school, like don't send me a text, like you call me. Okay, what text, what is that? But she sent the text this time. And so I'm like, okay, I really better call on. And so what I didn't realize was my aunt, being the extraordinary woman that she is, had already set the atmosphere to take care of her niece. Because what she had to tell me was something that I don't wish on an enemy if I had one. And that was that my mama passed suddenly. One day after her birthday, March 18th, suddenly, she was gone. 2019. Daniel, 19. Daniel, 19. How I was able to navigate the unknown. Because though we may be kind people and have compassion when our loved ones lose people that are close to them, you will never really know until it's you. I recognized that losing my brother and then my precious student after that was almost like an anesthesia. You know, they give us anesthesia so that we can survive surgeries because if they didn't give us the anesthesia, we would die under the brutality of what they're trying to do to heal us. I remember I went back into my meditative space. And in that meditative space, I began to realize what Daniel I may be connected to. And so I started to research one of my favorite historical texts where it has a character named Daniel. And the thing about Daniel is, is he was able to meditate. He was able to see a greater purpose despite the present negatives or the difficult experiences. He was not only able to just care for himself and a greater good, Daniel cared about others to the point that he would be willing to die for what he believed was good. And I realized the connection. Daniel 19. Marquita 2019. You're going to need to utilize these three aspects of love. A call to love. So how does love look to you guys? I want you to think about that. 
in your meditative spaces for a moment. How does love look to you guys? My lyrics to the song, Big Girls Cry, serve what I believe love is. But it's okay for you to have your own realization and interpretation of love. I want you guys to see yourselves experiencing strength, hope, encouragement, despite your unknowns. What are your unknowns? Probably things that you don't even feel comfortable with sharing with everybody. What are the experiences that you went through that you didn't know whether or not you would be able to survive? I encourage you guys to consider my methodology, which ensues these three aspects of love. Meditation, considering a greater purpose, and recognizing that no matter what you're going through, the three aspects of love can help you to navigate through them. I wish you all nothing but love. Thank you.